Today I want to talk about what a virtual machine is and how they work. There's a lot of mystery when it comes to virtual machines and people have a lot of questions. Some people are even afraid to use them because they are so mystified by what they are and intimidated about the software that runs them. But today let's take some of that mystery out. So first off, let's kind of define how a virtual machine can exist. So if you have a computer and inside of your computer here, you have an operating system short for OS that runs all the background processes and allows access between your computer and the hardware that it has, such as the CPU, GPU, memory, and all the other layers that we can imagine that communicate between our operating system and us. Well, a bunch of applications exist on this computer that we like to use all sorts of things, such as a word processor, games, media players, and many, many more things. Well, you can think of a virtual machine as actually another application that exists on your computer. Now, this application allows you to use computer resources that normally the operating system has direct access to, to create some sort of a virtual computer that can share those resources with your operating system. So what's so fantastic about VMs is exists inside your computer as an app. That special app has privileges basically through the operating system to access your hardware. So let's break that down even further so we can understand some things. So if we had, let's say a user space layer, we'll call this user space where all of our applications exist. Then we have another layer. We call this the kernel space. This just allows us to communicate between our user space programs and hardware. So basically a whole bunch of drivers and fun stuff that communicate to hardware exist in this kernel space. So in our user space, again, we have applications and these applications have to use the kernel space in order to communicate with hardware. Well, what if you could create an application that would use the kernel space and directly talk to their hardware, but that application could run another computer? Well, that's exactly what a VM is. A virtual machine, short for VM, is really just an application that allows you to emulate a computer inside another computer. And you might be asking, how can this be done? Doesn't my computer need access to the resources? Well, you're exactly right. But what happens is you get to specify and allocate or designate a specific amount of resources for your virtual machine. What does that mean? Well, you can specify, do you want, let's say you have 24 cores on your processor. Do you want two cores to be used Four six, so on, so forth, you get to specify that for the virtual machine itself. That way it's not taking over all of your computer's resources, leaving it useless and not being able to load anything. So there is the possibility of actually starving your computer of resources if you don't properly allocate resources. So for another example, if we had 16 gigabytes of RAM, if you allocated all 16 gigabytes to a virtual machine that exists in your laptop computer, well, your laptop would probably either crash or it would shut down the virtual machine, which is an app running on that laptop. And that's really all a virtual machine is. It's a process in an app on your system, which is a physical machine. So again, just think of it as a application that can install an operating system. So now virtual machines aren't necessarily that complicated. We understand what they are, but there's a lot of terms when virtual machines are talked about that are thrown around. So another one is a hypervisor. Well, this might seem very confusing to us that don't know what a hypervisor is, but basically this is an emulation platform that allows you to run that virtual machine and emulate talking to hardware. So this all exists in a hypervisor platform. And I just like to think of this as virtualization software. We'll talk about what I call virtualization in a moment, but let's give you some example of hypervisors that you may or may not have heard of. So for example, we have plenty of hypervisors up here shown that are either free or paid. So some of my favorites here are going to be 
VMware is basically is another one of these hypervisor platforms that offers many solutions. You have VMware Fusion, Player, Sphere. Some are free, some aren't, depending on what you get and depending on what your needs are. Are you a business? Are you an individual? Depending on your needs, you may or may not need a pro edition like the VMware Workstation. One of my favorites is VirtualBox because it's free and available to everybody. It's actually made by Oracle and has a great platform that works across different operating systems like Mac OS, Linux, or of course, Windows. So since it's available on any of those and it's free, it's easy to use, it's set up very easily. I have videos on setting up VirtualBox from scratch and installing an operating system on it to basically run a second computer on the computer that you already have. But there's also some other ones that come standard. If you have a pro edition of Windows, you can actually get access to something called Hyper-V from Microsoft. And guess what Hyper-V stands for? Hypervisor. Nothing special here. It's just another virtual machine application that you can run your virtual machines in. There's also Parallels for Mac. This one's probably the most famous for Mac just because it has good compatibility with Macs. Anyways, there's other ones, of course, you can research and figure out which hypervisor or virtualization app you might benefit the most from. But again, if you're wanting to start somewhere simple, I suggest VirtualBox just to get started. But I also want to take a moment and then talk about some of the benefits of using virtual machines. Because you might be asking yourself, what in the world is the point of virtual machines? Why even use them if I already have an operating system installed on my computer? Is there any reason to spend time? Well, I believe there is because let's talk about the benefits of using a hypervisor or virtualization software to host your virtual machines. But before we do, smash that like button for me. So number one, sandboxing is a great thing that you get with virtual machines. So maybe you need to test some kind of software that you don't wanna necessarily test on your computer, or perhaps you have a Windows computer and you can only test the software on a Mac or Linux computer, guess what? Now you can emulate Mac or Linux on that Windows computer strictly through software. How great is that? You can also, with sandboxing, protect yourself from suspicious software. So how does that work? Well, you install some operating system inside of what already exists, and that basically separates your own operating system, let's just say you had Windows installed and then you installed Linux, well, you could run that SUS software on Linux and have no relation between these two because it's running in a virtual environment. Number two, legacy app support. Maybe there's some legacy application that you wanna run on your computer, but long gone are the days where you can run it because the world has moved on from that software, but you're stuck using it. Well, now let's say you wanted or needed Windows 7 to run, but you have a Windows 11 computer. Well, if you put this in a virtual machine, guess what? You can still run Windows 11, and inside that Windows 11 computer with your hypervisor, you can create a new virtual machine running a complete version of Windows 7 inside of Windows 11. How fantastic you can run that legacy application once again. Number three, simply hosting multiple operating systems on one computer. Now you can technically do this by a process called dual booting, but that takes a long time to set up and run if you just need to do minor things with your operating system and you have some extra resources on your one computer. Guess what? You can run multiple operating systems side by side and easily switch through them or run them even simultaneously if you use a virtual machine inside of some virtualization software. How fantastic is that? I know it helps me out quite a lot as I'm testing software across platforms. Let's say I have an app that I created for Windows. Well, I also want to port that software over to Mac or Linux. I can do that easily by testing it in a virtual machine. And finally, easy recovery. What does this mean? Well, this gets to a more advanced topic, not really crazy, but something called snapshots. Snapshots are basically just little pictures that you're virtualization software can take of your virtual machine at any given point. And then once that's saved, you can revert real easily to that snapshot at any point in time. So you could basically screw up your entire system and within minutes or moments, 
you can use a snapshot to get back to a point where you saved it before the failure happened. So these are some of the benefits of using a hypervisor or VM software and creating virtual machines inside of them. And if you haven't already, take a moment to subscribe below for more of these explanations and understanding of how operating systems and Linux works. Let me discuss another thing, because I know that this can all seem confusing, but just know that basically if you don't take anything else away, you can create a virtual machine and install a secondary operating system inside of a computer that you already have. So it's awesome to know about because you can basically run a computer inside of another computer and just share the resources with the physical computer to the virtual computer. And I keep talking about this term called virtualization. I like thinking of virtualization as just a process where you create a virtual machine in some sort of a software, like a hypervisor, that can run virtual machines just like VirtualBox. And all that virtual machine is, is just a portion of an app that runs as an emulated computer that has access to the same hardware as your physical computer. How fantastic. So the reason I like VirtualBox so much is VBox for short, again, can run on Linux, Windows, or Mac. And I mainly use this for Linux installations if I want to test them. And again, this is the best thing of all free. And I want to thank Oracle for developing this for us so that we all have a powerful free virtualization software, which is suitable for most computers. Another thing is if you switch which operating system you're using VirtualBox on, the layout of VirtualBox or the VirtualBox application doesn't really change. So you're familiar with the software across any platform that you choose to install it on. So now I want to get on my Linux computer. This is Ubuntu running here, but could you tell this is a virtual machine? Well, it is. I'm running it here in VirtualBox. As you can tell here now, this looks like any other application that exists on your computer. I can exit out of this completely, shut it down, and I have control of it in a window that exists on a Windows computer that's in the background. And just to get an idea of what VirtualBox looks like, here's the VirtualBox manager, which runs that hypervisor software for you that allows you to emulate whatever operating system you want on your computer. Look at this. I have plenty of other operating systems available here that I like that I sometimes need to emulate other softwares in like Windows 7 here. Ubuntu 22.04, 20. I got Zorin and Elementary OS currently installed that I'm messing around with, but that's six operating systems all under one Windows machine. So finally, let's see what Wiki has to say about virtual machines and their definition of it. Hopefully mine's a little clearer. Hopefully what I went through is a little clearer, but in computing a virtual machine, short for VM, is a virtualization or emulation of a computer system. Virtual machines are based on computer architectures and it shows you a nice diagram of one that just really confuses things, but anyways, and provides functionality of a physical computer. Their implementations may involve specialized hardware, software, or a combination of both. Virtual machines differ and are organized by their function shown here, which we won't get into too much, but hopefully showing you some of these diagrams and going through simple explanations helps you visualize and understand what a virtual machine actually is. And one other term that I'd like to go through is host. People tend to throw this one around a lot. All a host refers to is the physical computer or operating system that is running a virtual machine on it. So don't get this confused. Host is referring to host computer, which is your physical computer and the operating system installed on that physical computer. So when someone says your VM is sharing resources with the host, that just means it's sharing resources with your physical computer or operating system. Let me know what you thought about this explanation in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more videos, smash that like button, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.